we have with us a senior advocate of Nigeria and human rights lawyer, Femi Falano. He's the counsel to Sheikh El Zakzaki. Good morning and thank you for joining us on TVC Breakfast. Nice to have you join us. And thank you. So three months ago, you wrote a letter to the vice president uh, to stop what you call the flagrant disobedience to court orders which has characterized this administration. Did you get any response as regards to No, that? it was a letter to the acting president. To the acting as president. As, was. <laughs> as at that time. Yeah. <laughs> Did you get a response uh, uh, precisely for your letter? Not in writing yet, mm -hmm. but I got an assurance that the issues raised in the letter were being considered by the government. Mm. Uh, although for me, you know, I think we need to move quickly in matters of this nature so that we do not unnecessarily uh, create the impression that the rule of law is in abeyance in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. It's so fundamental that we must at all times banish impunity from our life as a nation. I mean, you saw what happened two days ago in Abuja, where a, a defender, a criminal, I mean, a, a suspect, wrote a court until the orders of court are obeyed in respect of my bail. I'm not going to take part in my trial. I mean, that can be very embarrassing. And I had warned repeatedly, I'd warned the government, don't play into the hands of those who are being prosecuted. Hmm. And that's the impression being given up. And that, that's what the government is doing. So, in the case of Ezaki Zaki, right, when I was first briefed to handle these cases, I mean, my attitude was to say, no, I'm not going to get involved. But I believe it to be totally against what I stand for. For any group of people, whether the military or police or whatever, to kill people in our country and get away with it. In December 2015, 348 people were killed. No post-mortem, no investigation, no contact with the families. I mean, the bereaved families. Mm. And these, the bodies were simply, you know, buried in a mass grave <laughs> in this ancient time. And even when there was a judicial commission of inquiry set up by the Kaduna state government, the panel came to the irresistible conclusion that those who perpetrated such atrocity will have to be fished out and tried. That has never happened. On the contrary, the Kaduna State Government has arraigned Ezaki Zaki and his wife before a court in Kaduna for murder of their own members. Meanwhile, a hundred members a hundred shites had also been charged to court for murder. And they were the charge and acquitted by their own courts, you know. So you, you don't give the impression. Oh, that we're operating a lawless government. Therefore, you allow anarchists and others to seize the moment. I mean, you're talking of clashes between the military and civilian. Please, there was no clash. There was no clash. You have a group of Nigerians on the street, asking the government, obey a court order. Very, very, it was a moral crisis for the government. There were allegations that they threw stones at the military. They even attempted allegations no, you see, you that see, they attempted to see, get weapons from the military. You see, again, that is, that is bonkun. It's not true. That was a kind of lie that was dished out in December 2015, we were told that the Shiites wanted to assassinate the chief of army staff. Hmm. And that in the course of the clash, about seven people were killed. It turned out later, from the government, that 348 people were killed. And at the end of the day, at the commission of inquiry set up by the government, nobody talked about any plot to assassinate anybody. For instance, I will not support the seizure of roads or occupation of roads by any group of people, Shiites or any group of people. But once the law of the country allows people to demonstrate, those demonstrations, those protests must be carried out within the confines of the law.
I mean, I was once in Ghana, 2007. Ghana was marking its 50th anniversary. A group of Ghanaians wrote to the IG, we are going to protect at the stadium, at the Accra Stadium. And the police said, no, we are expecting guests from all over the world. We are not going to allow you to embarrass Ghana or disrupt the program. But the IG had to go to court to get a court order. And the court said, no, we are not going to ask any group of Ghanaians not to protest if they feel we are not independent yet. Hmm. But what we are going to do is to ask them to carry out their protest in another part of the city. But we're not going to say, don't express yourself. Because it's already part of our law yeah. that people can demonstrate, that people can protest for or against the government. And that is going on in Nigeria every day. Okay. There, there is, there is a, a, a media report uh, credited to you, say, urging the Shites to continue to protest until the leader of the Shite is released, as exactly is released. Now, we have seen the dimension of... Uh... No, I, I saw them. I was in Abuja. Okay. And they were carrying out a protest, which I thought was very lawful and peaceful. Okay. And I asked them, don't engage in violence. You must not go outside the ambit of the law. That was, that was my advice. I, I, was, I was caught in the... I, I went to the... I think I went to the Ministry of Justice, and I was coming out when I saw them. Okay. And I asked them, no. You have no business blocking the office of the Attorney General of the Federation. Go and march peacefully. And I've had to defend the rights of protesters in Nigeria, including the AMPP, the defunct AMPP, yeah. led by General Muhammad Dubari. I have defended publicly, I mean, outside the court and in the court, the rights of the bring back our guests to remind us daily of the fact that not all the Chibo guests have been fine. Mm. You know, sometimes you... Mm. Yeah, go ahead. Sometimes you wonder why government held on to the man for that long. But Mr. President gave us a glimpse earlier in the year when he said that national security indeed should supersede the rule of law. Uh, what are your thoughts about that no, position? No, national security is subservient to the rule of law. Mm -hmm. Because we have, we operate a constitution. Even under the military dictatorship, where we were ruled by martial law, you still had to operate under the law. I mean, take Decree 2, for instance, of Decree 2 of 1984, signed by uh, Major General uh, 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 Muhammad Dubari as a military head of state. I have cases where people were detained under that decree. Mm. And we got them out of detention because the authorities did not comply with the law. I, I remember an incident where the law said, the detention order read that Adegbe Nro Noah, N-O-A-H, should be detained. Right? Mm. No, Adegbe Nro Noah should be detained. But when they brought the return to the court, what we had was Adegbe Nro Noah, N-U-A-A. And the court said, no, you're not talking of the same people. <laughs> Because there are two different sets of people. Okay. Therefore, thou shalt release Adebe Noah. Hmm. And, and we had such cases hmm. under the military. Now, and that was when we had a decree to allow detention without trial. Now, you are operating a democratic, seemingly democratic system of government that says no Nigerian shall be detained. Say in a place like Lagos or Abuja, where you have a court within a radius of 40 kilometers. Hmm. That, Thou shalt not detain anybody beyond 24 hours without taking him to court. The whole idea, again, based on our experience under various military dictators, we don't say, no, we are going to preserve our liberty. Therefore, before you can detain anybody beyond 24 hours or 48 hours, you must go to a court and get an order, a remand order that will be renewed fortnightly. That is where our law is. So nobody can go to court. Uh, nobody can now say, sorry, we are detaining somebody because of national security. Who defines national security? You must submit the facts that constitute national security to the court. In this particular instance, in the two cases of Ezak Izaki and his wife, mm. the government brought up this bogey of national security. And the court challenged me. The Honorable Justice Kola Wale 
who decided the case in the federal high court. Yes, this is their response. Say no, my lord. Section 45 of the Constitution stipulates that majority of the fundamental rights enshrined in the Constitution may be suspended or even abrogated in the interest of collective security, public health, decency, you know, morality, yeah. and so on and so forth. But that has to be done in accordance with yeah. the law. In other words, you cannot detain anybody outside the procedure permitted by law. And therefore, I did say on that occasion, my lord, you cannot detain a Nigerian on the ground of national security or that you are protect, putting him in protective custody. Yeah. It's only if somebody has a very dangerous and infectious disease like Ebola that you can quarantine him or her. But you cannot quarantine a Nigerian without a court order. Mm. Okay. Mm. Now, the, the, the issue of protest, I, I'd like to return to that issue of protest because it seems like a lot of Nigerians, the moment they see a group of people protesting, especially what has been happening with the Shiites, either on, on the front of the, uh, on the pages of the newspaper or on the media, a lot of Nigerians don't seem to understand how these things play out. And, and they take sides mm. immediately. Now, are you concerned that even, because you are the one representing them, are you concerned that every time the Shiites decide to protest, sometimes it degenerates? And then sometimes lives are lost, and then sometimes it's chaos. We've seen the one in Kaduna, we've seen the one recently no, in no. Abuja. You know what we're trying to do right now? Yes. Is to get the government, first of all, okay. to know the state of the, law, of the law with respect to public protest. And it is, it's not about shares. We fought that battle. Incidentally, in 2003, a protest led by General Muhammad Ubari and the late Dr. Chuba Okadigo mm. in Kano mm. was violently disrupted by the police. That led, I mean, I was briefed, and that led to a case in court. We won that case in 2006. And what did the police say? Oh, you didn't get police permit. The court came to the conclusion that police permit was a relic of colonialism. Those who brought the law here don't repress their people. They demonstrate in the UK. Mm. So why should we belong to the past? Therefore, Nigerians can demonstrate within the ambit of the peacefully. Mm. The police appeal, they lost. In 2015, the National Assembly now amended the Electoral Act to say, notwithstanding the provisions of the Public Order Act or any other law, Nigerians shall have the right to protest, and when they are having holding a political meeting or holding a rally, the police shall provide security. Not the army. The army has no business with the management of rallies in Nigeria. Under the armed forces, there's no provision for soldiers to get involved in rallies. And if a rally is going to get violent, and I've made it clear to the government, there's a procedure for dealing with the protesters and the conveners. Because there is no right that is absolute. And I have pleaded with the government, why don't you recognize the right of Nigerians to protest? And then we sit down. Can we confine people to certain areas in our cities where they can protest? Now, the bring back our guests, members, were protesting in the Unity Fountain in Abuja. There was no problem initially, but at the state, the government was disturbed. I mean, talking of the previous government, uh, Jonathan regime, I said, no, you must stop this protest. You are embarrassing the government. Of course, we had to go to court. The Federal High Court, Capital, I mean, uh, the Federal Capital Territory High Court, mm. upheld the rights of the uh, uh, Bring Back Our Guest member to protest peacefully. So when the Buhari, the, when the Buhari regime tried to stop the same group, bring back our guest, we have to refer to that judgment. And then as the Inspector General of Police, why can't we sit down and ensure that you get policemen in line with the law, police personnel, to ensure that you do not have miscreants 
or so-called hoodlums, you know, breaking into the whatever. And you also can do that with the shares. Since you are not prepared to obey a court order that their leaders be released, you, you also about, cannot mm. say, oh, we cannot protest. Hmm. But we can ensure that those protests are carried out in a manner that raw users are not disturbed. That's right. Because just like you have your right to protest, I also have my right to move without any intimidation or harassment. But what kind of response now is permitted under law when there is an obstruction? Because that has been the case you with the brother, shared you, protesters. You know, you know again, again, if, if I'm traveling on Lagos about the road because there is a religious festival or a convention, mm. I don't invite the army to come and shoot hmm. at members of some of these religious groups. I don't do that. What do you do? You either call the uh, members of the road safety corps or the police to move the people out of the road. And if they fail, you can tear gas. Let me refer you. And if you. they fail, yeah. I mean, if they refuse, hmm. you can use water cannon or rubber bullets. Hmm. But no law allows any policeman or soldier to use live ammunition on protesters. Uh, okay, that's, that's murder. Let me refer you very quickly to a statement you made earlier. Uh, you cannot quarantine a Nigerian without a court order. Yes. As we speak right now, there's a Kaduna High Court order uh, uh, that rejected the bill application uh, that was filed for Sheikh El Zizaki, uh, given reasons that uh, the, there is a good health facility for him where he's being kept. Would you say that government is still no, operating you, you, against you know, a again, court order? That is where the government gets, gets things strong. Almost two years ago, if I to be two years in a couple of weeks, the court said, Ezaki Zaki and his wife shall be released. They shall be paid 50 million naira mm. damages for illegal detention. Mm. They shall be given a temporary accommodation because you have demolished their house. Mm. Those orders were not obeyed. As soon as the members now trooped to the street to demand compliance with the law, the government now rushed to court. Oh, we have charged them. We should have been the excuse provided by the government. Whether you believe in the charge or not, the government should have come out to say they are now being remanded by a court. Not to say for security reasons, we're not going to comply with a court order. And for me, that is what I've tried to impress on the Shai's member. Now that the High Court has rejected the bail application, you, you, we have the right to go to the Court of Appeal. But obedience to the rule of law must be on both sides. Hmm. Must be on both sides. Hmm. A government cannot insist that citizens comply with the rule of law. Why you come out arrogantly to say we are not going to obey our court because of national security? That's what causes some of this problem. All right, but, but from the standpoint where we are right now, what option is open or what option is left to be explored, especially when there's a pronouncement from court? Even It's not even in the case of El Zagzaki. We remember Dasuki is there. Mm. We, remember, we remember some journalists who have been uh, kept in custody and so on. What option is left? No, you see, you see, we have to decide as a people. Okay. And when I say that, including the government, that we want to operate a democratic system of government. And once you agree to do that, there are certain irreducible minimum standards of behavior that will be tolerated in such a society. The first principle, when you say you operate the rule of law, is that rule of law simply means you rule according to law, not according to the whims and caprices of the ruler. So there is a, a, a difference between rule of law and rule of rulers. Where you substitute rule of law for the rule of rulers, you run into the crisis we are going through in our country. So if we agree that in line with the provisions of the constitution, under the rule of law in operation in Nigeria, mm. citizens can demonstrate for and against the government, would then have to sit down under what conditions 
can you demonstrate? There's a place we call I Park in, in London. Any dissatisfied citizen, any disgruntled person, any concerned citizen can mount the restroom there and abuse the hell out of the prime minister or the queen. No problem. Everybody moves. No problem. So we also can say in a place like Lagos, if you want to demonstrate, you go to the national stadium or Ganifa and me park in Ojota. In Ojota. And we did that. But don't disturb free flow of traffic. Mm -hmm. And if you do, of course, you have crossed the line. Because you have also frustrated people from enjoying their own freedom of movement. Yeah. You can be taken to court. This is the way we should operate. And for me, that is the minimum standard of behavior required in the circumstance. All right. But you cannot use your powers to settle political scores. I mean, you have some, I mean, you know the uh, Islamic world, you have the uh, Sunnis and the Shiites. The Shiites. Now, you have Shiites, I mean, Sunnis in government now. Mm. But you can't use the instrumentality of the state to liquidate your opponents. That's not the business of the Nigerian state. Are you appealing the Cardinal High Court? Oh, for sure, um, for sure, for sure, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, uh, th there's a similar issue. Uh, the, we remember the, okay, we have just a few minutes to go now. We remember the issue of the Executive Order 6 by, by the government where a lot of people, or Nigerians, feel that there are laws. Sorry, before we go there, okay. I think it's important to also recall, mm -hmm. because I was also involved in the crisis that we witnessed in the Niger Delta. Okay. When the government felt, oh, the only way we can deal with these guys is to charge them, you know, with treason, with terrorism, and the rest of them. And I was defending the main leader. I'm not talking of Ken Saru, We did mm. that under the military. Mm. And, of course, they were legally executed. Mm. I'm talking of Enrioka. I was given a 62 can charge. We got 59, knocked out. Remaining three. And I raised objection against the three. It was at that stage, the Yaradua regime, President Yaradua, personally contacted me. Can we, in the interest of the country, review this matter? Mm -hmm. And he sent two people to Lagos to meet with me. And I gave them conditions for ending that conflict. And of course, we had to go and see my client in detention. He was brought to jail from where I, I didn't know. Where I himself didn't, didn't know. He was brought to jail. It took us about six hours to persuade him to accept the offer of amnesty. He did, and he was the one that toured the old creeks to persuade his colleagues to embrace amnesty. For me, and of course, the case had to be run from the court at the instance of the state. Because if you had won, it would have been catastrophic for the country. At that time, our production of 2.3 million barrels That's per day had been reduced to about 700,000. I also believe we also can solve this problem politically if the government is committed. All right. Uh, it's good to have the revelation of how the amnesty program uh, yes. was, was better. Don't forget what some of the leaders are saying now. That, that's what I'm, the record is there. I mean, the record is there. In fact, one of your colleagues, uh, Mr. Che Guadeni um, of uh, this day, you know, chairman of the Interior Board of this day, you know, alluded to this in his book. We're going to have to continue this conversation. Well, it, it's so interesting when we have uh, the legal icon in the studio and we talk about some of these things, especially the revelations. Uh, some of the some of the uh, parts of the stories you don't get to read on, on the, the papers. On papers every day. We must thank you so much for coming on the program this morning. Thank you, very much. Thank you uh, legal icon Femi Falano, this morning on the program. And just before we go, we'd like to tell you that the views and reactions of our resource persons on the topics discoursed on the program today are their views and have no connection at all with the TVC News. All right, thank you for spending your morning with us. Tomorrow, we'll be back again with other issues that concern Nigeria, Africa, and the world. Have a great day ahead. I am Mike Okwache. And I am Nifabio Gutoye. See you again tomorrow.